So starting with Dustin, please introduce yourself, your company, and how you're protecting us in cyberspace. Excellent. Thank you for inviting me today, Kevin. Really appreciate it. Uh, just as a quick introduction of myself, again, my name is Dustin McIntyre. I'm the CTO or Chief Technology Officer at a company called ComSovereign. So in that role, that means I'm responsible for developing our products and solutions. So who is ComSovereign? ComSovereign is really a combined diverse set of companies in the wireless and related industries. That includes a U.S.-based approach to a full-service 5G equipment provider. Um, ComSovereign provides products and solutions really across the ICT sector, including 4G, 5G, additional things like wireless transport infrastructure. But uniquely, we also do other things like airborne uh, solutions like drones and aerostats to complement our communication side, but also additional things like power systems. And uh, I would say more pointing to today's conversation is that we brought in a new key piece uh, called Mobile Edge Computing, or MAC, uh, which really uh, amplifies or accelerates the 5G picture into the next realm, which is the application solutions. So our, our company was built, uh, you know, basically out of scratch from best of breed technology components. Uh, we're only a couple of years old, uh, and those components really are, are both startup acquisitions, sort of best of breed solutions, but also mature product companies, which are now being folded together to integrate into a common technology portfolio. And what that does, that really brings together a harmony of leading edge next generation capabilities, such as our Lextrum in-band duplex technology, so that's a radio technology, our mm -hmm. silicon photonics piece, which relates to the fiber optic networks, uh, but also our mature product companies that bring forward manufacturing capabilities and know-how. So I think your question was, and what are, what are we doing to protect ourselves from the cyber, cyber threats today? Well, I mean, just to take that conversation and play it back, I think we're, most of the listeners will be very aware of the uh, rip and replace project that's ongoing with the U.S. government. And that was fundamentally a decision that was made that's um, a decision based around trust that certain global vendors are not to be considered trusted and pose threats to the integrity of our critical infrastructure. Well, that's one of the fundamental principles of trust is, is transparency. Um, and today we base our trust really around where we build something. So I trust this place, but I don't trust this place. But in reality, there's really no way to fully detangle that, that global supply chain. Um, you know, implementing this, this type of decision making is a little bit arbitrary because it depends on deciding what matters and what doesn't matter as far as how we decide trust. Um, but trust is, you know, kind of a qualitative metric, right? So I trust or I don't trust, I sort of trust. But that decision really could be boiled back into a quantitative measurement, quantitative data. So, for example, I think we're all familiar with the TIA's working group for the Supply Chain 9001 initiative is really kind of re-looking at this and saying, how do I go about my decision making process for what is trustful? Um, and this community here in our conversation today will be about around what we as a group or a community are also contributing from a technology standpoint around how we see our capabilities playing forward to bring back the concept of trust that has a bit more fundamentals to it. How do we reach a technology solution to what has previously been more of an empirical decision? So today's conversation is really all around how we as companies are bringing our technology solutions forward to help drive that conversation.